everyone welcome back to our channel so in this video we're going to go over uh, what we did with the drywall how do, we did it how we put it up and any issues that we came upon so um, I did not record the first two sheets that we put up uh, it was terrible uh, I have to tell you it was a struggle we were trying to do something different trying to do something new uh, we were hoping it was going to work out how However, it did not. Um, so the plan was we had actually bought two, two of uh, these new stools. Uh, they were almost like ladder stools um, at Home Depot. They were like $25 each. Um, we were trying to save money. Uh, we were going to purchase uh, you know, a drywall lift because the ceiling is higher in the living room kitchen uh, compared to the bedrooms. However, uh, it just cost too much and it was probably close to 200 or more for a uh, drywall lift. Um, and also, we were also looking at renting one um, and to rent one cost a lot as well. It would have cost us a hundred, uh, I don't know, a hundred something, maybe 130 to rent. Um, so that was not an option for us. Uh, so we are trying to save money here because we have so much to do. So that was our plan. We bought those, uh, you know, those ladder stools that I was saying. Um, and they are great for when you're painting and they're great for when you are nailing your drywall. However, for the ceiling, uh, it did not work. And that was due to one, uh, me being short, um, <laughs> uh, that's not something that uh, we could have, you know, worked around. Uh, I just, I was too short. Um, the husband was fine. However, when we got on those ladder lifts, uh, you know, he was a lot higher than I was and I couldn't hold the drywall at all. Uh, it was falling and then we had to try to screw the nails in at the same time. Um, you know, our arms were hurting, our backs were hurting, and we were sweating, and we were like, okay, this is not working, uh, so we need to figure out what to do. So we went back to what we originally did with the bedrooms was um, we made this cross, and you could see here uh, that's what's holding up the drywall. So we just put two, you know, pieces of wood together and made that cross so it could hold up one end. And then what we did was on the ladder, on the longer ladder, you could see there the, with the yellow top, we had actually nailed a plywood uh, and, and piece of wood to it. And then we would um, sort of shimmy it up to make it tight to where on the other side of the drywall, it would hold the other side. Um, so this worked out well for us uh, this is what we did we should have done them in the beginning and to be honest uh, that was definitely a struggle with those first two two to three pieces um, I don't know why we even attempted to do that but anyway um, so I started recording when it actually started to work uh, I told my husband I did not want to record unless we knew that that system was going to work um, and as you can see, it did not. So just moving on, um, you know, you do what's best for you and what's in your budget. Uh, if we had the budget to buy a drywall lift, uh, that definitely would have been easier. Um, you know, and hey, if you have the money to do it, I definitely recommend to get it. Uh, it would save you a lot of time and heartache, to be honest. But if you are on a budget like we are, this system worked for us. We literally just put two pieces of wood together and, you know, we made it stay up. And that was the whole point uh, when you're doing the drywall on the ceiling is you just want to make sure that your drywall is up and you have uh, the capacity to screw in those screws uh, where you need to. So, uh, with that being said, um, you know, let's move on to, you know, uh, the system that we did and moving forward, how we uh, attack this room. 
Another thing I want to go ahead and mention is when you're doing renovations in um, a trailer, mobile home, um, you are going to have to face the reality that there is not enough space uh, to work in, to work around. What do you do? How do you work around that? Um, we had to come up with a plan, uh, especially with all of our stuff. So we had, if you could, uh, if you guys saw, we had the couch in there. We had the kitchen cabinets in there. We had his tool uh, carts in there. Uh, so there was just a lot going on in, in that small space. And we could not take it outside because of the weather. So we're looking at rain, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, things getting wet and, and all of that. And where were we where were we going to put the couch? You know, things things like that that we had to um, really try to plan out. So the best thing for us, what we did, was we tackled uh, really the room like piece by piece, um, if you would say. So what we did was we did the ceiling, then we did the walls on that area and so that was the front area and then we moved the stuff out of the way and then as we finished the drywall in that section then we moved the stuff back to where we started um so and then we would go you know move from the front to the middle to the back um that's how we tackled it with all of the stuff that was in there it was just moving things around uh, we wanted to really just do the whole ceiling and then do the walls but we couldn't do that um, so we had to do like I said the ceiling pieces of the wall move the stuff over and then tackle the middle and then move the stuff over um, that's you know my little t tip bit there about you know what to do with space um, when you're renovating in a small uh, area uh, if we had more room you know you could just you could just move the stuff out and then you have all that space to work with uh, unfortunately we uh, couldn't in our situation as always you want to make sure that when you're screwing in your nails you um going down okay so you want to make sure that you're you are at least I would say 12 to 14 inches away from each nail so you want to do that straight down um, and then you want to make sure that your studs are measured correctly as well as far as spacing um, I think the spacing of the studs were about uh, 14 to 16 inches apart um, so that way you can kind of measure out how your drywall boards are going to be um, you know, like I've said before, uh, every room is different. It really is. Every room is different. Every measurement's going to be different. So you have to work around that. Uh, as you can see right here in this frame, like I was saying, we did the drywall and the ceiling and the walls, and then we moved everything back into that area. Uh, that is how we had to work. And then you could see, so now we're going to tackle the middle and then at the end and then move the stuff back to when we're doing the mudding um, which will be in another video but uh, this video is specifically on um, us doing the drywall um, I'm also going to do a video on the drywall and mudding uh, for the foyer but I think I'm going to do that on a separate video and that is because um, the foyer actually gave us a run for our money uh, that was not an easy task at all to do the foyer and that would even though it's a small space uh, You would think it would be a lot easier than tackling a living room kitchen However, it was because there were so many crevices so many corners uh, you know, it was because there's the trailer is You know the original trailer is a one bedroom and then there's an attachment so with working with two spaces, you're literally working in two different rooms um, when you're thinking about the foyer. But I'll go over that in another video for you guys um, just to 
because I think that's going to take a whole video, to be honest, um, to actually show you guys what we did in that area. But um, moving on, like I said, uh, you know, this is the system that we did. You could see he's lifting it up. Um, I'm on the other end, and he's going to slide the drywall in between where the, um, that plywood, and there's actually a piece of wood above that plywood. Um, so he's pushing that in. I'm on the other end just to make sure that it is even, making sure that it's aligned with the other drywall and there's no um, huge gaps. And to be honest, once we got like a really good system going um, and we knew what we were doing, uh, it went pretty fast as far as putting the drywall up um, in the living room kitchen. Um, so, you know, I mean, once you guys do a renovation on your own and you, you start to feel things out, you'll see uh, what works for you and what doesn't. Um, and as you can see, those are the stools that I was talking about, those ladder stools. Um, they're pretty low, like I was saying. Like, I, I was still short. There was no way I was going to stand on one end and he was going to stand on the other. And then we were going to, like, screw these nails into the ceiling. Um, that was not um, the smartest thing we've done since this renovation. So, um, you know, we did not think that th thoroughly. And I just wanted to give you a little tip too. Um, and most of you will know this um, if you've done renovations before. Make sure that you're marking your studs where they are. Um, because when we started, we did forget to do that. And it's such a pain to try to find the studs when you are ready to, to nail, um, to screw these nails in. And then you're like, oh my God, I don't know where the studs are. Um, Cause then you're gonna waste time trying to find studs and then poking all these little holes into your ceiling and in your walls. So um, what I suggest doing, uh, what a lot of people do is just marking with a marker or a pencil or whatever uh, where your studs are. That way when you're ready to screw, uh, you know where that stud is, where that line is, and it's a lot easier. So um, when you're doing the ceiling, see, uh, you could see there we are screwing about five to six nails uh, going across. Um, you do want to make sure that you're putting enough support on that ceiling, um, that drywall ceiling. Uh, you don't want to, you know, put two, three and think that that's going to hold. Uh, it's not. You want to make sure you're putting five to six uh, and some of them, honestly, we put like seven just to make sure that uh, that drywall was not going to fall. Uh, that's very important. Uh, this is the last ceiling drywall that we had to put up for the living room kitchen. And we were so happy to actually finally get that last piece in. Um, that, it, that in alone was an accomplishment for us. And another tip, um, you can see there to the right a little bit where we are going to put um, actually our pendant light for the um, island. Uh, I do suggest um, to go ahead and make your cuts for any pot lights you're going to put in the ceiling, any pendant lights, any fans that you are going to put. Um, once you put the drywall up there, uh, I do suggest to go ahead and do your cuts then. Um, you don't want to do it after when you're, you're like mudding and stuff like that. Uh, I think it just slows down the process. If it's already cut, you know, you really have to just go around and just start painting. Um, so that's just one of my little tips. Um, we were going to wait until we mud. Um, but however, I do want to let you know uh, uh, if you aren't, you know, a professional like us, I would say that... Um, when you're doing those holes and those cuts, you will have like, you know, uh, a little bit of drywall that falls or that cracks. Uh, and that just comes with you, you not really being experienced in cutting those holes for uh, the outlets, uh, for the lights and stuff like that. So um, we did have to end up dry uh, mudding 
you know, taping and mudding around those uh, cuts. So uh, just in the future, I would say go ahead and do your cuts. That way when you have to mud, um, you know, those little breakage that you, you did while doing those cuts, it will make it a lot easier on you and you don't have to do that afterwards. And you know, I've got and, and and I've gotten questions about what I thought was like the hardest part of renovation. Um, I don't think there's just one thing. To be honest, uh, it's the whole process. Uh, planning is key. I always tell you guys that um, in my previous videos too. Just planning. Uh, if you plan out what you're going to do, uh, that does save you time and heartache of uh you know of actually attacking the renovation uh if you're planning it right however you know with that being said uh nobody's plan really comes out the way they want to sometimes it just doesn't work so um i don't know i don't know what the hardest part of renovation is uh I don't like mudding. Uh, I think I've said that before in another video. I don't like that process. I think it's just very tedious uh, and it's hard on your shoulders or hard on your arms. Um, you know, my husband enjoys it. He likes the mudding part. I like the sanding part. Uh, it's weird, but I do. I like the sanding part. I just, and, and then you guys will see in another video when I do the sanding um, and I actually just use the machine this time instead of like manually using uh, one of those square uh, sanders or you know whatever they're called those sand blocks um, because this was a bigger surface um, I used the machine and I'll actually show you in another video um, you know what grit I used as well um, but you know that's I don't know I think it's just the whole process in general you know I didn't I had a vision of what I wanted the kitchen to be, the living room, the bedrooms. Um, but you really never know if it's going to turn out that way. So, um, you know, you hope, but you never really know. So I don't know. I, I think my, my overall answer is the hardest part of renovation is the whole process. <laughs> uh, that's just to be honest. It's just the whole thing. Uh, it's not one, one thing over the other. You know, and I've always, and, and I've also been asked if I thought I could do this renovation on my own. And that is uh, definitely uh, no answer. Um, I could not have done this on my own. Um, you know, my husband, he does all the measurements. He does all the, a lot of the cuts. He, he does a lot of the planning as far as, you know, he asked me what my vision is. What do I want? And then he has to plan how to attack that. So um, without him, uh, this would have not been possible. Um, and he does what, what we all do, uh, which is look at YouTube, you know. Um, he grasps more of what's on YouTube than I do. You know, I'm looking at what I want and the little things, you know. But he's actually at, uh, watching those videos and looking at how do I do the technical things to make sure that this is done right you know so definitely I couldn't have not done it on my own um, I think it's this is like a partnership this is like teamwork you know um, I can't believe it's just me and him doing this to be honest uh, it's a lot of work a lot of hard work you know but if you have that vision and you have that partner who's going to attack this with you uh, it's possible and it and it can happen you know that's what I would say you both have to be on the same page as far as how much you're going to work on this uh, when you're going to work on this um, you know and to be fair um, I work at home and it is a lot easier on my schedule on my end uh, if we both were working you know I would say it would have taken a lot longer you know what I mean? But because I, w I work at home, I'm able to actually tackle a lot of the stuff while he's at work. You know, a lot of the, the little stuff. 
But yeah. Oh, I, I do want to note this section. Okay, so... So this is just one of the realities of working in an old mobile home or mobile home in general. Um, you guys can see these old studs. These are the old studs and you can see how thinner they are compared to the newer ones. You see these wires going through the studs. Um, I just wanna put a little note here and a little tip for you guys. You have to be careful with this because if you accidentally screw into a wire, you can cause a fire in your mobile home. Um, it might not show up now, but it could show up years later and then spark a fire and then your mobile home is gone. I do suggest what we did, um, which is put these metal plates where the wires are so you do not accidentally screw into these wires. Um, this big black wire here is actually for the stove. Um, and we did make sure that we covered that and we covered the smaller wires as well. Um, the last thing you want to do is to accidentally, accidentally, you know, screw into these wires. Um, it's very dangerous, uh, but, you know, a lot of people actually don't know that. So uh, that's just one of my little tips for you guys. Um, if you have any suggestions about those as well, please put it in the comments section. Uh, maybe it could save someone else, um, you know, the heartache of losing their home. Um, so that's just one of my little tips. But you guys can see the drywall is done. Uh, the room looks bigger. It looks brighter. It looks, uh, you know, just having the drywall up uh, kind of gave me hope to see that how the room could look. So uh, I'm so glad that you guys are joining us for this video and that you could see uh, what we've done and where it's going and all that great stuff. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.